the need controversy so let's look into the particular issue so what is this particular exam so this exam is actually called the national eligibility come entrance test so that is actually called the neat national eligibility come entrance test that is called the neat exam so we are going to discuss what actually happened in this particular exam why is that much is of a controversy is actually happening and uh, that too in a prelims that is in a upsc perspective we can say so let's understand what this particular exam is actually all about uh, so let's uh, understand the first point is that why this particular exam is been conducted the main purpose of this exam is to have a standardized admission procedure so as you know in india there are multiple exams are actually been conducted for, conducted for different entrance examinations but we never had any one uniform procedure it was all scattered in different different types so this one particular exam that is the neat was actually supposed to be one exam to have a very standardized uniform admission procedure and not just the admission procedure for evaluation purposes also so just imagine if you want to uh, get admission as a doctor for mbbs courses uh, in india for example we have got uh, different states also right so what if each and every states actually conduct their own uh, different uh, entrance ex examinations what if one particular hospital uh, for example aims there was actually one separate examination for some other hospital there will be some other examinations so that used to be very difficult to follow multiple exams had to be uh, you know written for every candidate so to avoid all those things they we need to have a uniform one single exam that would have been very easy for the candidate also for the study purposes for the evaluation purposes so that is why this particular exam was actually designed that is the need exam so let's understand this uh, particular exam what was the actually the structure of this particular exam uh, so this year's exam we have to understand that the exam actually was conducted on the 5th of may that is in 2024 may 5th that was the date when the exam was actually conducted and the exam is actually of ug neat so this particular ug that is undergraduate program for the mbbs to become a doctor you have to go for mbbs right or or, or for a bds section we can say for the dentistry so these particular things mbbs or bds so this was actually in the undergraduate program and this is what that particular exam was actually about the main fifth exam so uh, ultimately the result was declared on june 4th so you know the speciality of the day june the 4th that is it was the day in which the election results was actually announced by the election commission of india so it is actually one very special date in which the every media every people was actually bothered and concerned uh, major, mainly on the election time that was the date in which this particular result was actually declared so that is the second thing now we have to understand how large uh, the magnanimity of this particular exam so it was actually 2.4 million people million students or candidates we can say so roughly you can say that 24 lakh students so they actually were, were actually appeared in this particular exam so it is not just a very small exam that it means that 24 lakhs of students had appeared in this particular exam which itself shows the magnanimity the if the largeness of this particular exam so out of this 24 uh, uh, you know 24 lakh students uh, they actually wrote the exam in around 571 cities so just imagine all over india they were actually conducting this particular exam at the very same time and they were in and out of this 571 cities around 4700 centers were there so just imagine and uh, and uh, along with this 4700 uh, centers we can say that around 14 of the centers were actually abroad so it was actually conducted not just within india it was actually conducted outside india also abroad also so that that it shows how, how demand there is actually to become Uh, or to study to get admission in the mbbs courses in india or to the bds courses in india so even people who are who students who were actually candidates had appeared from abroad india that itself shows how much important this particular exam is actually all about so then we have to understand that how many seats were there we can say that around more than 1,8000 seats were actually there to be filled from this particular exam alone and uh, around 700 uh medical colleges were there uh, from that around one, more than 1 lakh seats were there to be filled by this exam so this was the uh, why i am telling you all this thing is actually about you have to understand the context that this is not just a very simple exam 
it is a very large exam one of the largest exam to be conducted in india in which and we everybody have me or you everyone has one or other friends or relatives or cousins or nephew or niece who will be who would have been writing this exam so it is actually one particular exam one of the exams which is actually affecting each and every one of us directly or indirectly so that is the importance of this particular exam so it's moving ahead uh, you as you know that lot of different protests are actually been uh, you know happening in india throughout india in different parts of india a lot of different political parties uh, and organizations are taking up this particular matter so once after that june 4th when the election date was actually announced everybody was actually focusing on the result only right the political result only the who will be our next prime minister who is the party who will be the uh, who will be who uh, which all parties will be in the coalition so all those things were actually happening but just imagine silently this particular thing was actually getting evolved the protest the scam the allegations everything was actually coming related with the neat exam so initial in even after the initial days of the june 4th of the result uh, date nothing was actually happening but soon this started getting momentum so now when i am speaking as i am speaking to you right now the entire country in different parts of india is actually getting affected by different protests and that too is one of the fourth genuine reasons also the entire country is actually country is actually protesting so let's understand what are the different allegations why this entire country is why the people of this country why the citizens are actually protesting what are the allegations so let's go into the matter actually so uh, about this particular exam we know that the to total score is actually one of the allegations we i'm telling you the total score is actually 720 marks so just imagine in this particular neat exam of 2024 out of 720 marks there were actually 67 people who actually got full marks actually complete marks so that is the number one thing how can 67 students 67 candidates get the first rank and that too with the complete marks 720 out of 720 for example last year there were at least there were around two people two students got the full marks and the previous years also to get the full marks was a very high luxury but now this particular year around 6, 67 students exactly got the highest marks possible and they, every 61 of them are actually in the first rank category so that is one of the allegations how can this actually happen that is the one particular point and the second thing is actually uh, about the marks such as 718 or 719 exam etc et like that for example this particular exam has got if you have a correct answer you have plus 4 marks 4 marks will be given to you like our upsc exams also and if you have one particular question wrong then you have actually one mark negative will be there so it is actually statistically uh, it is actually impossible to get this kind of mark 718 7 9 7 18 717 those kind of marks are actually impossible or very difficult or very it cannot be happening in this particular exam that is what the students and and the different parents of the students are actually alleging how these students are actually getting this kind of marks that is the second boss second issue we have to address the third thing is actually about the different cases of proxies for example some of the uh, people were actually arrested from different parts of india that and that those people were actually those candidates were sending the, uh, some other person as a proxy candidate so one person will be disguised as another person and he'll be he or she will be going with one particular hall ticket and write the exam on behalf of another person so there were actually cases being reported in this particular exam uh, that is the third thing the proxy cheating we can say and the next thing is actually about one particular sender that actually have the same sequence of hall tickets so we can say out of the first uh, ranks actually around six uh, six students actually were actually coming from one single sex exam center that is we can identify from the same sequence of hall ticket so when you look at the hall ticket numbers of the result which is actually published we can see that around uh, those six six students were from one single sex exam center that is in faridabad haryana so that is that again raises one question that how can these six students Uh, combinedly get the very highest mark possible another pause another that is another allegation on a way the second thing is actually the leak exam actually if the paper actually was leaked or not so recently as i'm speaking to you right now just two or three days back there were news actually coming that the neat exam the question paper of neat was actually getting leaked in the internet in the dark web uh, etc so we'll be we have to understand what this uh, dark net 
and everything will be coming to the science and technology section we'll address what this dark web etc so uh, the point here is that the paper was actually getting leaked even 48 hours even before the exam and that was actually being supplied in the black market for sale so uh, candidates and the parents of different candidates were buying this question paper giving out lakhs and lakhs of monies and they were actually going through the question paper even before the actual exam was happening so that is one important thing we have to address and the next thing is actually about the grace marks we have seen so what about the grace marks so we can say that around more than 1500 so we can say that it is actually 1563 students got the grace mark in this exam so there comes the another issue so why those people why those 1500 people students got the grace mark the so, uh, so only some of the not everybody got the grace mark right so definitely the person the people who are conducting the exam give an explanation that why those students are getting the grace mark so there is actually another we will be going into that uh, justification of the uh, conducting agency also and uh, why this grace marks was given because uh, the exam which was supposed to happen for around more than three hours uh, some of the students could not actually get the papers there were some technical issues and all these things so those students could not get the uh, question paper on time so they did not get enough time to complete the question paper so the conducting agency the nta the national testing agency gave grace marks to them so that is the uh, you know explanation which is actually given to them but what is actually it, there is no transparency to this particular thing that is the problem so who all got this particular grace mark what all conditions or criteria were actually was actually applied to give this particular grace mark and uh, if this grace mark was actually be notified before for example whenever there is an exam being conducted there is an information uh, brochure or you can say notification will be coming right so this has to elaborately mention that if there is actually any time delay if there is any technical glitches etc there will be some sort of compensation some sort of grace marks will be given so this was not actually uh, in the first case so the people or the parents students candidates nobody knew about this particular grace mark system in that case there would have been lot of different students who would apply for this particular grace marks right so this was actually an arbitrary decision it was actually awarded to very few students some of the students those 1560 students only so why it was not actually been uh, published earlier also so that was one important question raised uh, or you can say allegation raised uh, in uh, calling this particular exam a scam so and uh, we can also say that the even the cutoff was at the uh, exam paper was actually very easy actually so that is why it is uh, the cutoff marks also had very sharp increase that is for uh, for example from 137 marks from last year the cutoff actually raised to 164 marks so it, that itself shows that the exam was definitely easy so that is one particular thing but to explain that 67 students got full marks uh, because the exam was easy is actually a little bit difficult to understand so that is the reason why this entire thing is actually being discussed now let's look at uh, what this particular agency which is actually the conducting agency is actually all about so as you move ahead you have to uh, know which agency conduct this particular exam and the different other exams the agency's name is national testing agency near the name national testing agency you have got the stick mark also in between this two uh, this circle uh, national testing agency so what this particular agency is what are the duties and responsibilities and functions of this particular agency that is what we are going to understand right now so just know that uh, whenever we are studying such topics such controversial topics uh, in the current affairs and all make sure that you study it in a prelims or the mains perspective also the upsc perspective because after all we are also aspirants or candidates for some exam so let's look at what this particular agency the national testing agency is actually so it is uh, it is an agency it is an autonomous agency so we have to understand the word autonomous so what do you mean by autonomous it has some sort of independence it is working apart from the ministry away from the ministry with slight control only it has a level of independence that it can work independently so it is an autonomous agency which is actually working under mhrd you can say ministry of human resource development now it is actually enshrined as ministry of education so this particular national testing agency is working under under the control of ministry of education so that is one point the next thing is actually about uh, what this particular uh, agency does 
there are a lot of different uh, you know objectives and responsibilities of this particular agency first thing is that uh, it has to conduct different exams so we already uh, talked about we have been talking about the neat exam right there are uh, many other exams also the first thing is definitely the neat exam is there then there is gmat exam is there then there is gpat exam is there so multiple exams are actually been conducted this by this particular agency the je not the the je mains exam is there then uh, you have to also understand the gate exam the net exams so different exams are actually been there are much more exams are conducted by the national testing agency so it is a very important organization which has to work very flawlessly in a very efficient manner so that is why this particular topic again becomes another that is one of the other reason second reason why this topic is actually extremely important the uh, and it conducts definitely lot of different uh, such entrance examinations and it is registered this particular agency the national testing agency is registered under the society's registration act of 1860 so this act was actually established on 1860 and continuously is updated so this particular agency is also registered under society's registration act and what about the uh, objectives and uh, different one one thing you have to understand it is established on 2017 next thing is what are the major objectives of this particular agency so what are the different agency we can say so one thing is uh, to ensure the uh, transparency to this entrance system to this selection system of the candidates that is one of the objectives so that that is why this topic is relevant right so this topic actually uh, shows that there is the integrity of the exam the transparency of the system or the selection process is lost so that is why this topic actually become our current affairs topic so one thing is that what was its actual objective to gain the transparency of the system to have quality in the selection procedure the fairness to have efficiency in the selection system that was all the different objectives the responsibilities of this particular system but however it has been tarnished so let's look at what are the different uh, and uh, different uh, things we have to understand about the different functions we have to understand about the national testing agency so when look at the different functions of the agency one point we definitely mentioned conducting the different exams we mentioned some of the exams like neat gmat gpat etc so what are the different other functions uh, these are all conducted in the online mode definitely uh, and uh, for the ug purpose for the undergraduates for the for the pg entrance examinations several other entrance examinations are actually conducted by the uh, NAT, uh, nt actually so you have to keep in mind that not just for the ug but for uh, the pg purpose also several other entrance examinations are conducted by the nta not just the ug the next thing is uh, uh, results announced so after conducting the results has to be announced right so after evaluation the result declaration so all things are actually under the ambit of national testing agency so everything the timely uh, timely release of the results everything has to be done so that is one another question right so uh, the result of this particular neat ug was declared on the june 4th the 4th of june it was supposed to be released much days much weeks later at least two or three le weeks later but uh, suddenly this particular agency decided to uh, declare the result by after by preponing normally in india every type of results everything is actually uh, gets delayed right everything uh, if, you, if we are expecting result on june 1st it will come on june 15 that is a normal procedure here we saw one particular example in which the exam result not pre postponed but it was preponed so and exactly on the same date of the election so that is one particular thing the result even though that in that particular aspect the agency kept its promise that is it actually had timely a result declaration and the other thing is that they have to develop high quality question papers or question paper banks also so this agency was entrusted to create a good quality or high quality question banks or different question papers for the conducting of this particular exam and uh, this uh, agency is definitely nta is definitely has his headquarters in new delhi that is obvious reasons and uh, there are other uh, different uh, uh, objectives or responsibilities for the nta also for example uh, to create a better research and development culture so in our nation definitely there needs lot of research has has to be done in our education sector a uh, lot of different modernization has to come so it was also interested to bring in those uh, research and development uh, energy to this particular education sector also it is one of their result uh, one of their functions which nta has to fulfill one thing 
the second thing is that how research and development can be done they have to pool experts so they have to pool experts from different fields from different uh, geographical terrains of india then they have to combine those experts together the expert knowledge together give out the best results in research and development so that is one important thing responsibility of nda the next thing is actually about the training of different ventures under India. For example, uh, we can say that some of the uh, educational institution, the staff, the teachers, faculty members, they can be trained according to the new curriculum, the new evaluation procedure, etc. Some of the uh, advisory services are also given out by the NTA, for example, and then some of the international institutions, collaborations with international institutions are also done by the none other than the NDA. So we can gain what the world is actually working about. How what are the different new modern techniques the different parts of the world are actually acquiring. We can study that. We can give our own best practices. We can study from the uh, other other nations best practices also. So all these things are done by the NDA. So uh, and also if there are any other exams uh, which the NDA NDA has to conduct, it will be entrusted by the Minister of Education. If there is any new exam coming the Minister of Education will ask NTA to conduct that particular exam also. So it is basically an entrance exam conducting agency. So that is the basic summary we can understand. And uh, last but not the least, any other reforms needed in the particular sector. So uh, uh, as I said, the education is very important, uh, especially in the Indian perspective also. So uh, why? Because we, we are actually going through a stage of development, yet we are actually being jobless. So it is actually jobless development, jobless economy is actually being running right now. There is too much of development at the very same time, unemployment rates, uh, you know, rates are also very high. So that jobless economy has to be converted. And what will be the major thing which can play the best role in that? Definitely it is education. So NTAs was trusted with one another thing that is reforms in this particular sector, the recruitment sector, the recruitment procedures, all those things were actually have to be reformed and it was entrusted with that also and different uh, uh, different uh, the chairman also has to be a very eminent educationist and uh, there will be a board of governors who will be guiding the chairman and it uh, it also NTA also relieved the two other bodies for example CBSE was there there is a uh, one another body that is AACT all the uh, uh, all the council of technical education there is CBSC. so all these bodies had to conduct their own exams right the different different exams so NTA came and actually relieved all those different institutions and bodies and organizations in the particular selection procedure. So the NTA came and told that, okay, from now onwards, I will actually do this particular procedure. You can actually carry on with your own other special features, uh, special, uh, you know, uh, uh, functions and responsibilities. So this is actually the different functions of the agency that is called the NTA. So what uh, actually we mentioned about the allegations, right? The different issues happened in the particular uh, exam. So what is actually the NTA's version? What is their uh, justification or explanation? We can see. So uh, first thing is that we mentioned about the un un the very unusual high amount of marks, right? So a uh, lot of allegations are happen happening there. So NTA is saying that the exam paper was actually very easy. And uh, they actually, uh, you know, the all those some of the questions, especially from the physics and other segments were very easy. Uh, so that is one of the reasons why the exam the top marks are actually getting get gained by 67 students. One explanation. The second thing is that they actually uh, created a four member committee. So four member committee is actually created by NTA to inquire into this particular issue. The one problem is and they will definitely be, uh, you know, inquiring into the different aspects of the allegations we mentioned uh, before. But one problem is that we are alleging or the citizens of India are actually alleging problem against NTA, the, the National Testing Agency. And uh, this particular uh, committee which is actually formed, the four member committee, it is actually, it is headed by none other than the NTA chairman. The chairman, NTA chairman will also be a member of this particular committee. So, which means that we are alleging something, uh, we are, you know, uh, saying that there is one particular problem with this particular institute or agency or an entity, whatever it is. And uh, who has to inquire about it? If you need integrity and transparency, the ideal thing to do is to appoint an independent separate committee. But instead of that, a committee is formed and the head of the NTA itself is the chairman or the member of this particular committee. So that is the problem which is raised in this issue. 
and uh, uh, next thing is they mentioned about the compensatory marks the grace marks which was uh, allotted to the students right around 1500 students got the compensatory mark they said that around 45 minutes were lost so that is why the, this marks was uh, given and uh, but we can also say that the these compensatory uh, this compensatory allocation of marks is an arbitrary decision right so who got it who did, did not get it why everybody knew did not knew it so upsc had this uh, nta had to declare in its notification that there will be something some system like this if you are actually not ha having any technical glitches if you could not get that much full time of full time of uh, examination then you will be able to apply for this grace mark then we will actually evaluate on it and we will give the marks according to the different criterions this has to be very transparent but this was not done then that is why this particular uh, uh, protest lot of different protests were definitely is happening and you should also know that initially after that june 4th everyone everybody was uh, focusing on the political uh, outcomes the result the election results of the elections uh, even the media the mainstream medias everybody was talking about the election results and all these things so uh, slowly only when the protest actually started gaining through the different youtube platforms of course a uh, lot of different youtube platforms uh, you know debated on this issue they brought up this particular issue of the real issue of the candidates then only the particular the mainstream media could actually start to pick up pick the momentum of this particular issue so that is why eventually it is turning out to be a very huge protest so we should also be uh, aware about the role or the significance the importance of the mainstream media along with the social media both these things has to be compared what is actually the drawback of the mainstream media why social media is rising that is one important topic that is for another day so when uh, this particular issue the protest was happening slowly uh, uh, the matter was uh, uh, getting to the supreme court of india and uh, the supreme court after hearing it refused to postpone or stay the counseling for the exam after the exam so normally after the exam there will be counseling right so one student has to go to the counseling center and uh, through the online mode tell that i have got this much of rank so i have to go through the, uh, the all those procedures will be the admission selection procedure is there but supreme court anyhow after listening to the different problems and all uh, decided that okay the counseling let the counseling actually go ahead we'll actually look into the matter so that was the thing happened there and uh, uh, this particular uh, but at the very same time some positive results also came from this hearing of the supreme court for example the government of india the ministry of education inform the supreme court that uh, yes there is some issue so later the even the minister also accepted after a very long time the minister even accepted that yes there is some discrepancies in the particular exam so it took very long time for even the minister of india the minister of education in the india to accept something that is very humongous level so uh, in the government of india also in the supreme court agreed that uh, the grace mark uh, of the students uh, of all those 1560 students that will be scrapped so they have got two different options right now those 1500 students they can either retake the exam on june 22nd that is one day from now and the second option is that they can actually apply for the uh, you know allotment procedure without the grace mark so they can reduce the grace mark get their actual rank they get their actual marks and rank then you can go for allocate uh, uh, allotment procedure with that particular rank so two options is given for the those candidates who got those grace marks and uh, uh, but uh, definitely the demand is still there the protests are still going on uh, because the people are saying that okay now the government has accepted after this much of protest and the government has accepted that yes there is an issue so why you are actually cancelling some of the grace or some of the people's marks so if the this particular exam actually had a paper leak if the particular exam had their grace marks given arbitrarily etc a lot of such issues definitely happen it is being the evidence is coming day in day out so which means that the exam was flawed so why you are actually cancelling some of the results why there is partial cancellation why not cancel the exam completely have a thorough uh, you know uh, you know uh, um, analysis and all and give a complete retest so that is the demand which is actually been raised from the different parts of the country and uh, uh, this is one another example that is uh, after this particular neat exam controversy and all and there was one another uh, uh, you know notification was issued under the uh, pib website so that is the ugc net so the minister of education the government of india so this is one a little bit funny also just if you are reading it thoroughly so just read it to ensure the highest level of transparency and sanctity of the examination process the ministry of uh, education government of india has decided 
that the UGC net. So when you're reading this particular statement, we normally get a feel that okay to ensure the transparency and sanctity of the particular exam, government of India is actually going to do some some you know steps and all. Some steps are, will be taken so that the exam will be protected, the sanctity, the integrity of the exam will be protected. So that is the normal course in which we read the statement. But eventually, they say that to ensure the size, transparency, etc., etc., of the particular UGC net June examination, it will be cancelled. So instead of protecting, instead of ensuring the exam is actually uh, having that much integrity, the entire exam was cancelled. So this was one funny tweet also because uh, just imagine the number of students who would be preparing for such net exams and some other exams also. The CSIR, the different exams are actually getting cancelled also. So uh, this is not a very uh, you know hilarious or funny situation for other people because everyone will be affected one directly or indirectly because of this particular issue. So that is why we have to uh, monitor this particular issue very closely and understand uh, that what is actually happening in the future also.